So now we get to one of the most interesting things, I think, in concepts in inorganic chemistry, uh, which is this idea of the inverted region Marcus theory. And you can kind of see it here. But uh, when I first saw this, I, I didn't believe it. I didn't believe that you know, if, if you increase the driving force for a reaction, that at some point it's actually going to go slower. At first, under most conditions, right? At first, under moderate uh, driving forces, so uh, a, a little bit of voltage being spontaneous, making it spontaneous, you will decrease the barrier. That's what these from going from here to here is showing you, right? So yeah, you you apply more energy into the system, the reaction goes fast. But then the weird thing is you apply more energy into the system, and it actually slows it down. So. I wanted to just walk you through it to, to, if you buy the parabola business, as this is a good, as the parabola is being a good model for, um, for atoms moving around and vibrating in a, uh, in a coordination complex, then I can prove to you that this is true. Okay, and that's what I'm gonna do in this video. If, if you don't buy that, you're gonna have to go into the, the physical chemistry and, and go into Hooke's law and the harmonic oscillator approximation and dive into that. Harmonic oscillator approximation is an approximation. Um, so parabola isn't perfect, but it turns out to be really good. And the, the, the assumptions that made don't change Marcus theory in any meaningful way. You're still gonna get this weird inverted region behavior. All right, so what I wanna just show you is intersecting parabolas and just, just plotting this on Excel, okay? And looking at where they intersect. So, Forgetting about chemistry right now and just looking about parabolas and their functions intersect. So if you have two parabolas, right, that are the same shape, they're x squared, but one is offset 10. So we put y equals x minus 10 squared. That would be the function for this orange one. They're going to intersect. If you graph this out, you can solve this equation easily. x squared equals x minus 10 squared. Foil it out. Okay they intersect at a y value of 25. So your barrier here is 25. Forget the units, this is just me graphing parabolas, okay? Now, if you um, model like a driving force, right? So your product, we're gonna say now is more stable. So it's a, it's, you have a positive voltage, a negative delta G here. So what are you gonna do? You're gonna draw your second parabola that's offset here to be lower, okay? So we're gonna subtract it by some number. So I just picked a number here, I subtracted it by 50. Now your barrier is only 6.25. When you, when you plot these things, they intersect at 6.25 versus 25. So yeah, this is what we expect. This is the normal region of Marcus theory where you, you add a driving force. The more driving force you have, the barrier gets lower. The reaction goes faster. Everything's good. Now what's weird, but, but makes sense when you look at these parabolas, is if you uh, increase the driving force even more, in this case, I chose a value such that the, uh, the barrier decreases to nothing, okay? So this is now totally activationless, we call it. It has no barrier. But once you get to this point, now if you further increase the barrier, hopefully now you can, can see and you believe me that now I've increased the driving force from 100 to 150. Now we're intersecting on this back end of the parabola. And when you intersect at the back end of the parabola, that's where you get this inverted region, where I put more energy in the system, but I actually get diminishing returns. My rate goes down. It's like pushing ball, pushing a ball harder down a hill and it goes slower. Okay, it, it, it doesn't make intuitive physical sense to us, but it is true. And uh, you can see if I do it even, even more, if I'm minus 200, uh, the barrier is gonna go back up into what it started to, uh, 25. I'm just climbing up the other side of the parabola. So um, if you want to get a rate to see how the rate varies with driving force, um, you need to, to, to consider this like as an, in the simplest way is to consider this as an Arrhenius expression, which is an exponential uh, relationship between the uh, activation barrier, which is given the term uh, uh, delta G double dagger. Um, and then there's a temperature dependence. Okay? So, um, uh, and if, if, if you do this as an exponential relationship, okay, so K, the rate constant, is exponentially related to G. So if you then plot the logarithm of the rate, okay, well then, then E goes away, and the logarithm of the rate 
that just looks like how does delta G double dagger, the, the barrier um, chain. And the barrier we know changes as a parabola. We just kind of showed that, right? First it decreases, then it increases. And so uh, it's not surprising to see that the logarithm of the rate is actually following a parabola. But remember, this is the logarithm of the rate. So the rate is really sensitive on delta G double dagger. But you'll get this region where it's the normal region where you increase the driving force. Um, uh, if, you, if, you, if you increase the driving force, the reaction rate is going to in increase. Okay, but then you keep increasing the the, the driving force. This is negative delta G. Um, uh, then the reaction rate actually slows down. This is the, the mysterious, not so mysterious anymore, but very interesting uh, inverted region. So for many years, the Marcus inverted region was not observed. And when Marcus first published this, it received a lot of skepticism, as you might imagine, because it just doesn't make intuitive sense. And nobody had ever observed this sort of reaction where you push it harder and it goes slower. Marcus was pretty steadfast in this and said, no, you know, it's, this all checks out. It makes sense. We, we maybe haven't been able to push reactions hard enough to, to observe this yet, but it checks out. Maybe we don't have the tools yet to observe this, but it checks out. Turns out now it's been demonstrated in a lot of contexts. It's been demonstrated electrochemically. It's been demonstrated photochemically. Um, and, and in systems that don't necessarily actually have complexes at, at all, like in, in, in surfaces with, with metal atoms. Um, here's an example uh, just to show you one. This is an organic system, OK? But same Marcus theory still applies here. There's not metal centers, but still outer sphere electron transfer occurring. It's still the same principle. So you can put these different um, acceptor ligands on. I guess not ligands anymore, fine. It's, it's part of an organic molecule. And then do electron transfer. I mean, you can change the electron donating behaviors of these organic modes. And as you do that, you can see, all right, there's my delta G. All right, K is increasing as I uh, get a bigger, you know, driving force, K is increasing, K is increasing, and then boom, K starts decreasing. I'm in the inverted region. So the Marcus inverted region is just one of these amazing things of science. Once that was validated, you know, that's part of the reason why Marcus got the, um, the Nobel Prize, because it's just so counterintuitive and, and, and powerful. Okay, so just like in Marcus theory, in life, there's this balance, okay? And so in life, what you want to aim for is you want to aim for your optimal rate, right? When you're, when you're, when you're working, when, you, when, you're, when you're doing anything, you want, want optimal rate, right? And so uh, uh, this is really important. What is your driving force? How much are you driving yourself? How much are you pushing yourself, right? Uh, so what you want to aim for is you stress. That's at the top of this curve. This curve is basically how efficient you're working Okay, low and high. And then how much are you pushing yourself? Are you pushing yourself too little? Maybe, then you're, then you're gonna be bored or, or, you, or you're apathetic, you just don't care, right? You're just sitting in front of YouTube all the time. Uh, maybe you're doing that right now anyway. Well, you are doing that, <laughs> but hopefully you're not too bored. Okay, um, so you don't wanna be there, right? But you don't wanna be pushing yourself too hard. If you're pushing yourself too hard, uh, uh, then you're, you're gonna burn out, right? And you're, you're not, you're not going to sleep enough and you know, all these other problems are going to happen. So you're going to be too stressed. So you don't want too much stress. Like in many things in life, you know, if there's moderation is good, all right? A lot, a lot of, a lot of different things. So aim for you stress, guys. Last thing I just want to show you is that there is this uh, relationship in Marcus theory where you can uh, actually talk about, you can quantify this a bit. And we're not going to dive too much into this, but there's this formula. This is the difference in the redox potential. So that's your driving force. This is your height of the barrier. Um, and this lambda term is your reorganization energy. And so this uh, reorganization energy component has two, two parts to it that are talked about the bond length changes and the solvent molecules moving around in the second coordination chain, uh, uh, changes. So this is first coordination sphere, bond lengths and vibrations in your um, in your uh, uh, ligands, and this is your second coordination for your solvents. And uh, here you can see, basically, this is your uh, uh, barrier right here, your delta G double dagger. But here is your reorganization energy. And so this is technically what the reorganization energy is determined uh, by. It is the amount of energy to get the reactant to be in the position to be the product without transferring the electron. So that's why 
you're not moving in the x coordinate here, you're not moving the x coordinate because that's moving things around. But the reorganization energy is how much energy you would need to get to that point to be able to follow this curve of the reactor. And it turns out um, if you're in a self exchange reactor where this delta G is zero, okay, because your, your product and reactants have the same energy, then this whole term becomes one, right? And so this whole thing just becomes one quarter lambda. So you can prove this using, you know, graphing parabolas again, that basically the delta G double dagger is one quarter the reorganization energy. So then what you can do is if you have these reactions, these self-exchange reactions, which you can measure the delta G double dagger, if you just times the barrier that you measure, okay, there's different ways to measure these barriers, experimentally like uh, uh, variable temperature NMR as an example. If you do that, then you times that answer by four, that energy by four, and you can get out the reorganization energy. So now you have this like very abstract thing that you can get out. You can get out how much molecules have to move Okay, in order to be in the right position to become a product. And so it's this crazy abstract thing, but extremely powerful in, 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 in order to predict these electron transfer reactions. And, and to me, it's just uh, uh, incredible that you can back out all of this information um, from fundamentally what's a pretty, pretty simple theory, right? Just overlapping parabolas. Um, so anyway, hope you guys uh, enjoy that, and uh, I'll see you in chapter seven.